What's happening? Brian Tong here with the Apple Byte for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And let's start the show with the latest MacBook news. Now, if you're still unsure if you want to get one, KGI Securities reports all MacBooks will be upgraded to Intel's latest Cabby Lake chipset that was announced at CES 2017. They'll bring a 20% performance increase for laptops and lower power consumption. But on top of that, the 15-inch model will also get the 32 gig RAM option many pro users were looking for in the first generation. See, that's exactly why you should wait. Now, the report also says the 13-inch model without the touch bar has performed worse than expected, and Apple will cut its price in hopes to improve that. Also, the latest fourth beta of macOS Sierra 10.12.3 brings a new feature and will warn you if the display brightness affects your MacBook's battery life. Hold on, hold on. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I've been informed we did not pronounce that correctly. It's actually Marcos Sierra. Okay, we're good now. The warning only appears if your brightness is anything higher than 75%. We know about the new MacBook's battery issues. Apple says they've fixed it, but it's still only available in the beta, and we haven't seen how much it actually fixes for regular day to day users. Now, we'd love to hear any of your stories or experiences with your new MacBook Pro overall. There's no way I was going to get the first gen, but are you happy with it? Are you not? Let us know at the at CNET.com and we'll post some of your comments in next week's show. Okay, in iPhone rumors, according to Cohen and company, the next iPhone could have facial recognition thanks to a new laser sensor. It's the first rumor we've heard of any kind of depth sensor as part of the package, but Apple has never had face recognition on their phones. Apple's acquisition of PrimeSense in 2013, the team behind the Microsoft Kinect camera, could help with Apple's push for augmented reality in the future as well. Now, multiple reports are on board with the idea that we'll see three iPhones this year, the standard 4.7 and 5.5 inch iPhone upgrades, and a premium 5.8 inch OLED phone with wireless charging. See, just what the people want, a phone that doesn't fit into any of its hipster skinny jean wearing fanboys. All right, in a follow-up to the AirPods report from last week's show, the numbers probably aren't as good as we thought. MPD says the Slice Intelligence numbers with a 26% market share for AirPods were only based on online sales and pretty much misleading. MPD data includes brick and mortar sales and online sales altogether. They found Apple's AirPods market share is more like a 2% share. See, cue the sad trombone. Now, MPD did mention it's pretty impressive for Apple to even make a dent like that in such a short time. Beats led with 25% of unit sales, LG had 10%, and Bose brought in 8% of sales. But Apple is already neck and neck with Plantronics and Jaybird at 2% after only one partial month of sales. See, that, my friends, is the power of the Apple brand. Now, a sketchy rumor says the Apple Pencil 2 will launch alongside new iPad Pro models this year. Let me guess. It will be thinner and take away features people still use. Come on, I'm messing with all you diehards who always get their feelings hurt when I say stuff like that. Now, patent filings have shown potential new capabilities like being able to draw on the smart cover like a drawing pad. Apple's been testing it to work on an iPhone with iMovie and different apps. You know, exactly what Steve Jobs never wanted. No. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away and you lose them, yuck. Plus, there's also been patents filed by Apple for it to work on a Max trackpad as well. Now, Apple is expected to keep the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, a lower cost 9.7 inch one, and bring in a new 10.5 inch model with reduced bezels this year. And since we're talking iPad Pro, we need to go back to last week's show where we featured a dude holding it with one hand at Obama's farewell speech. Now, lots of you were freaking out how he was holding it upside down as well. I saw that too, but I have to point out, it was actually smarter for him to do that to get a steady picture since the camera lens would be closer to his hand instead of being further away at the top and swaying a whole lot more while he held it upright. So you know what, for that, he deserves a good apple. But, there is still no excuse, no damn excuse for him or anyone to use an iPad to take pictures in public. You know how I feel about that, and yeah, that's a bad Apple. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebytecnet.com about your Mac Pro experiences for next week's show, or just tweet me at Brian Tong if you need a friend in 140 characters or less. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the Apple. <laughs>